Almost exactly a year ago, I talked to you all about my back injury. I'd injured my back a year ago, uh, trying to clean out the office and hauling years worth of old tat away. And I didn't know it at the time, but I'd ruptured a disc in my spine. Of course, that meant that the Gymquisition show in London had to be cancelled. And I generally had almost a year of chronic pain that ruined my life. But I am happy to report that in the past few months things have been slowly healing up and I feel like I'm almost 100% again. We are looking at plans for Gymquisition to take London once more and I can do a lot more stuff like this. Oh my god! <laughs> Pokemon Snap hit the Wii U Virtual Console on January 5th, 2017. A cult classic, the N64 rail photography adventure, is beloved by fans and many have been slavering for a new port. I never played it myself, but I've always wanted to, and I've waited quite literally years for Nintendo to put the thing on its hot new system. Which it did, when the system was no longer a hot new system, but cold and so very, very old. In fact, this would pretty much be the Wii U's death year if 2016 wasn't that already. The Nintendo Switch is due in less than three months, and if last year was any indication, there sure is shit nothing left for the Wii U to do. Hell, if 2015 and 2014 were any indication, there sure is shit nothing left for the Wii U to do. But that's beside the point. I've spoken in the past about what I call a Nintendo move, and no, it's not a big waggly dildo. A Nintendo move is a move that defies all human comprehension, characterised by a misunderstanding understanding of the market, terrible timing, and more than a little gauche overconfidence on display. The entire Wii U was a Nintendo move. The underselling of the NES Classic that we talked about a few episodes ago, a total Nintendo move. Putting a cult classic long-awaited Pokemon game on the Wii U's virtual console less than three months before the machine's obsolescence? Well, strangle me while I come if that ain't a Nintendo move. Nintendo's handling of its virtual console service has been pissing me off since the Wii days. At Nintendo's Command is an overwhelming library of NES, SNES, N64, Game Boy, GBA, and DS games. But Nintendo is so stingy handing them out that any excitement one could have at the prospect is quickly undermined by browsing the meager assortment that's available at any given time. For a service that essentially just sells ROMs, Nintendo does a terrible job of demonstrating why going through official channels is actually better than just downloading the fucking things for free in exchange for sitting through some hentai ads, which is fine by me because I'm always shopping for new hentai. Every week, Nintendo dribbles a thimble full of virtual console games on its home and portable systems, and it's always quite literally a drop in the ocean compared to the shit Nintendo could be pumping out. Hell, some weeks you'll be lucky if you get more than one game on any machine's virtual console. At launch, the virtual console on any given system seems to have a handful of titles, and then Nintendo settles into a one or two a week pattern that ensures the full potential of the virtual console's library will never, ever be realised before the system housing it is replaced placed with a new system that will then start again from scratch. And thanks to Nintendo's ineptitude at handling online accounts and its love of making customers rebuy shit they already bought, the VC devalues considerably as each machine draws closer to its death and a new machine comes out. But surely, Jim, I hear you ask, staggering releases makes better business sense than saturating the market with hundreds of titles at once. Yeah, there's a logical sense to that, and as a guy somewhat almost pseudo-famous for criticising Steam's torrent of releases, you'd think I wouldn't be arguing in favour of saturation now. However, when we're talking about old games, ROMs at that, I believe we're talking about a different market that benefits more from having a lot to browse than a conservative drip feed of games. Retro games are often more disposable experiences, trending toward brevity and a simplicity in game design that makes them much more suitable for casual pick-up and put-down interactions rather than lengthy invested sessions. The rise of emulators and the offering of thousands of games across dozens of platforms has only helped to augment that sense of disposability, while those 100-in-1 plug-and-play devices, as well as the NES Classic itself, have normalised the idea that retro games come in big bundles. This isn't Steam publishing five pre-alpha quality asset flips for every one good game that comes out. Quote-unquote saturating the virtual console is giving browsers of retro games what I believe they want. 
shit to actually browse. Over its lifespan, the Wii U's managed to accumulate less than 300 virtual console games. Incredibly, the five-year-old 3DS has a mere 200 games, and that's if we include delisted titles and GBA games that remain exclusive to the system's early adopters. Fuck, before I started plotting this video out, I didn't even know the selection was that goddamn poultry. Holy shit. Anyway, when I'm looking for old games, I'd like to have a ton of stuff to look through. This is especially true for portable systems, where I'm specifically looking for as many disposable handheld items as I can. The way in which Nintendo releases its retro games is not conducive to how I like to shop for them, and I am confident in saying many feel the same way I do. There is a reason companies like Sega, Namco, and fucking Nintendo release so many of their classic games as compilations when sold outside of these virtual console marketplaces, because two or three Mega Drive games just aren't going to cut it on a disc. You want to be deep in that nostalgia, hopping from game to game, wallowing like a pig in the filth of your own rose-tinted consumerism. Eat that shit, you fucking farm animal! Browsing requires there being things to browse, though, and 200 titles over five years just doesn't get the fucking job done. In fact, it's a rather pathetic situation considering the majority of these games are tiny files that Nintendo just needs to go ahead and fucking upload already. Making this issue worse is a long-running problem of Nintendo's and another classic a Nintendo move. International disparity. See, Nintendo remains steadfast in its refusal to admit that we actually have a worldwide market now, and most products have done away with the archaic, pointless staggering of release dates. Not Nintendo, though. Oh, no. Not just the release consistency, but the overall quality of average VC releases differ from country to country. The Japanese virtual console selection, for example, is always far superior to North America. That's just what happens. The Japanese Wii U VC has 400 games, while the 3D boasts 278. Now, that's still a paltry sum when you consider the amount of years these systems have had, but it's a fact that Japan gets more and better games for literally no reason that I'd ever accept, even if the reason was really good, which it won't be. I'm being facetious, of course, I'm just confident there isn't a good argument because we're talking about Nintendo, and don't give me the vague licenses argument. I'm sick of that argument without anything backing it up. If licenses is the reason Pokemon Snap came out in Japan and Europe ages ahead of North America, I'll suck a bumblebee out of Shigeru Miyamoto's anus. Now, of course, you might wonder why I care when I've gone on record as saying Nintendo's glorified emulation service consists of mostly crap games that are not worth what I consider to be an obscene amount of money. Yes, more than 50 cents for Balloon Fight is bloody obscene. Worse than public indecency at a beach on the school holidays. But that's not to say all virtual console games are worthless. I mean, I'd have dropped 10 bucks on Pokemon Snap if it had been available like two years ago or something. Or during one of the Wii U's many, many dry periods when Nintendo had fuck all to show for itself and wouldn't have fucking died if it had just fucking put some fucking games up from the thousands and fucking thou fucking sons of fucking games it has in its back fucking cat a fucking log. I am like you, a consumer worm at heart as I've admitted before and I have money, plenty of money, that Nintendo could have had if it wasn't the champion of contrived scarcity and terrible release plans. Fuck, even just looking up games is a hassle, especially on the 3DS which has perhaps the worst digital storefront interface ever. Actually second worst. It was the worst before virtual reality happened and Steam refused to let me filter all those fucking awful cocking Vive games out of the upcoming releases page. And yeah, I know there's some obscure way to filter by tag if you search for stuff, but I don't want to search, Valve. I just want to look at the latest games without the half a dozen early access VR zombie shooters that made me want to fucking vomit onto my tits. Anyway, trying to find out if the 3DS eShop has the game you want using the eShop itself is apparently like asking Rob Liefeld what the human body looks like. Have you ever used the search feature on the 3DS eShop? Now, there's a system desperately in need of some adequate filters with it chucking videos, demos, full games, and anything vaguely related to what you're trying to pinpoint coming up in results. You can't even sort VC games by their original consoles. Oh, and the little present thing when you download a new game was cute at first, but for every game you buy, unnecessary artifice. Those seconds wasted with pointless animations telling me I have a new game downloaded as if I don't already bloody know have probably accumulated to at least a minute after five years, and as young as I'm gonna die, that's a minute I can't afford to lose, Nintendo. Thanks, Nintendo for killing me. By the way, while I'm banging on at Nintendo for this, it's not the only platform holder handling a huge library of impressive older games poorly. Sony's efforts, or lack thereof, with the PS1 and PS2 games available on PS3 and PS4 over the years have been abysmal with the same drip feed bullshit. Hell, do not get me started on the lazy slapdash insulting way PS1 classics were dealt with on the depressing PlayStation Vita. I'm still pissed off that whole thing launched as a complete train wreck and Sony simply gave up bothering to put more games on the Vita storefront and made you 
uses Jump Street frankly bizarre hoops to transfer them from the PS3 to the handheld. Maybe we'll dump on Sony sometime because it's a fucking disaster. But today, Nintendo's the one with the huge assortment of cheap to publish retro titles that it hoards like a dragon on a pile of gold. Nintendo's the one that is sorely lacking in so many other areas of distribution that the Virtual Console's shittiness compounds so many other problems. And that's the real issue with the Virtual Console. Some may wonder why I'm spending all this time railing on a service of mostly overpriced ROMs, but it's about more than that. The VC is indicative of Nintendo's out of touch approach to handling its shit. And I don't know, maybe you think I'm making mountains out of molehills, unnecessarily needling Nintendo because Pokemon Snap annoyed me a little bit. But, you know, when you look at it from another perspective, you're fucking wrong and your opinions are garbage. Yeah, it, it is glossy. I know, it's got a glare to it. Oh well, that's pay for it now. Anyway, this is the Jimquisition. I hope you all enjoyed this episode. I know I did, because it's a really good show. Okay? It's a really good show. And I know some people are going to be upset because I'm criticising Nintendo, and heaven forbid we ever do that. But please know that my criticisms always come from a place of love. I only ever want the game industry to be better. I only ever want the games that are in the shadow of these companies to flourish. That's all I want. I just want to make the world a better place. And thank God somebody's here to do it. Because no one else is trying. I'm literally the only person trying to make the world a better place with my internet video game show. Thank God for Jim. He was definitely talking about me. Oh, Ubisoft. Time for another edition of Oh Ubisoft. These are all the stories about Ubisoft, the EA of Europe, the company that just makes you roll your eyes and go, Oh Ubisoft. Here's a story we missed last month. Five Ubisoft executives have been fined by France's stock market regulator for insider trading. Uh, a combined $1.4 million is expected to be paid by five individuals, one of whom is Ubisoft Montpellier's uh, CEO. So that's nice, isn't it? Uh, the CEO in question has uh, denied the charges, which have been levied against them and not just accused, but, but they've actually been given the fine. So after research and findings, uh, the regulator said, no, you are insider trading. Uh, but the CEO says that the executives in question could have had no idea of the market that was coming up. Uh, the, the thing that was in question was the CEO sold stock uh, in the company just before delays were announced for the crew and the original watchdogs. And the CEO says, well, we couldn't have known these games would be delayed. And I'm not here to test the veracity of that. I'm not here to question that claim. Uh, the Jimquisition has never featured an opinion, ever. We're a fact-based objective show. And also, I don't want to be sued for libel again. I try and have one libel lawsuit on the go at any given time. So we're not going to cut, touch that too closely, uh, but I did just want to point this out because some people did bring it up uh, and mention that, that I haven't covered it on Yo Ubisoft, uh, which is uh, really the only thing you can say to any of this. Oh, Ubisoft. And I'm going to stop now because as you can tell I'm rambling uh, because I had to do several takes of some stuff today because things weren't recording and I'm sweating under the lights and probably looking like a horrible sex pervert on camera with the sweat and the breathing so I'm going to stop. Oh Ubisoft! <laughs> <laughs>